डॉक्टर हरीशी श्री विवेकानंद जी एंड सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स प्रेजेंट ओवर हियर इन दिस ऑगस्ट गैदरिंग टुडे वी आर रिमेम्बरिंग एंड पेइंग ट्रिब्यूट्स टू श्री लोकमान्य तिलक ऑन इज वन सिक्सटी सिक्स बर्थ एनिवर्सरी टुडे वॉज इज बर्थ डे एंड ही वॉज बॉर्न इन एटीन फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी सिक्स एट रत्नागिरी which is a coastal belt of maharashtra and we all know that he is popularly known as because british called him in that way that father of indian unrest so he was a great driving force of our freedom struggle and he was successful in creating unrest in our society against british rule so he is popularly known for that and as there is an adjective before his name lokamanya so his leadership was readily accepted by people not only of maharashtra but of entire country so he was popular and we today in our uh, syllabus of history reads that there were three people lal bal and pal bipin chandra pal was from bangal bal is bal gangadhar tier from maharashtra and there was lal lala lajpat ray from punjab so these three people were so famous at that point of time that they could create unrest in our country against british hegemony british imperialistic rule so because of their dedication and sacrifice we could see these great days of independence none of us over here have experienced those adverse days we are fortunate enough to take birth in swatantra bharat so it is our sacred duty to pay tributes to all our freedom fighters who did everything who sacrificed everything for the sake of swatantrata of their motherland and he is one of the leading lights amongst all those freedom fighters we all know that uh, what kind of life he could lead in those adverse conditions what kind of things he could do in his lifetime it is simply amazing we just cannot imagine a single person can do so many things in one life in a very short span of time he was a multifaceted genius a most versatile person who took birth in our country like many others and he could guide our own people to achieve or gain freedom for our country his many declarations are famous as he said while he was standing in front of people in the court and he said swarajya is my birth right and i shall take it and that created great impulse in the minds of people at that point of time and they stood steadfastly against the british rule so he was successful in creating that kind of impulse in people's mind because of his several things and there are so many other factors also how he could contribute to the freedom struggle we all know that today uh, entire country is celebrating ganesh utsava ganesh festival actually it was a normal practice in maharashtra that people will bring vigraha of ganesh to their homes and they will celebrate everything at home but he was the one who could identify the potential of ganesha that if i can take ganesha from home to the streets then that will become a great rallying point for indians to come together to fight against british rule so he could identify that potential he was the one who could identify the potential of great story inspiring story of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and who he took lead in celebrating shiva jayanti that is birthday of shiva mahar 
Chhatrapati Shivaji. So many such things are there. But today, why Vidyan Bharati has come forward to pay tributes to him, not only as a freedom fighter who did so many things, but for one particular feature of his life, that he was a person who could identify that British invasion was particularly with a tool called as science. He was a person to identify this. My job was uh, slightly made simple by the speech of uh, Shri Vivekji because he could narrate few incidences to you. But uh, we need to understand this fact because this uh, celebration of 75th year of Swatantrata has given us an opportunity to revisit the struggle for Swatantrata. And we should draw number of conclusions by revisiting, re-studying the struggle for Swatantrata. When Vidyan Bharati started looking at it in a very different manner, what we could deduce from that revisit of Swatantrata Andolan is this, that there were number of invaders who attacked India. Their main goal was to demolish the identity of India. By demolishing the identity, people will forget their unique features. They will forget that and they will surrender before us. That was the idea of invaders. So all the invaders with their own systems, methods and tools, they attacked the very identity of our country. We all know that uh, Bhaktiyar Khilji attacked the great seat of learning in our country, Nalanda. He demolished the entire university and he could put fire on the great library of Nalanda which was burning almost continuously for six months. What was the reason behind that? What was their intention? Intention was to demolish, destroy the identity of India so that Indians will forget and they will lose their self-esteem, self-confidence and they will be slaves of ours. That was the idea. And they utilized all kind of conventional means to demolish this identity. But British aggression was totally different than that of all previous invaders. How was it different? It was different in methodology as well as in tool. The tool of British people was science. We need to understand this. Number of studies have been carried out to understand what kind of aggression was there by British people. There was a scientist, Dr. Rajesh Kochar. Unfortunately, uh, he died five, six months before. He did a lot of study about history of science in recent times, especially uh, with the advent of Western science through British people. He studied that period of our country till today. Recently he died. He was a known astrophysicist of our country. And he came out with a research article with a title which uh, tells us the real story of British invasion. The title of the research paper by Rajesh Kochar is like this, Science Utilized as a Tool to Consolidate Colonial Power in India. Then there was another scholar, Dr. Ashish Nandi. Uh, he wrote a similar research article with a different title, of course. The title was Science as a Reason of State. And he specifically mentioned many incidences how British utilized science as a tool to subjugate our country. And he has mentioned one particular uh, incidence or an uh, example over there where he says that British colonizers used a kind of black magic that was developed on the theories and discoveries of modern science to impress the minds of natives. So this is how he could explain in details that how British people utilize science as a tool or as a weapon 
to subjugate india so british people weaponized science to attack our country to destroy demolish identity of the country to jeopardize our uniqueness so we need to understand this fact there are many other aspects one can study a lot and vidyan bharati is doing that kind of study so our idea is to present all these freedom fighters with this idea because they were the people who could who could identify the design of british invasion what was their tool what was their methodology and to challenge their hegemony what we should do against it so they could identify it what was the special feature of lokmanya tilak he was the one who could identify this design of british attack how he could identify it i will give you one example because of the paucity of time but there are several other examples he was a great friend of swami vivekananda and while paying tributes to swami vivekananda because uh, he was alive even after the death of swami vivekananda for almost 18 years and swami vivekananda was uh, there in pune and stayed with lokmanya tilak as is one of the guests so he stayed while he was in pune while he was wandering across the country and he was with swami vivekananda's family he stayed over there in pune for almost 8 days and they could interact with each other in great details but at that time lokmanya tilak could not identify though he could identify the greatness the great scholarship of that sanyasi but it was not known to him that he is the one who is going to become great swami vivekananda but later on they used to meet each other and while paying tributes because swami vivekananda uh, took samadhi in 1902 uh, tilak ji's death was in 1920 on 1st of august so uh, Swa- uh, swami vivekananda how lokmanya tilak looked at him while praying tributes he says that there was a great influx of material science through british rule in our country understand the words of lokmanya tilak there was a great influx of material science in this country and it could impress the minds of our people see uh, though he was a votary of having home rule swaraj but he could identify the basic idea of british invasion that it was a great influx or they dominated this country subjugated this country with use of science so he called it specifically as a material science and what he said about swami vivekananda he said swami vivekananda was the son of india which is the country known across the world as mother of spiritual sciences and swami vivekananda represented this mother of spiritual sciences at world platform so he was very clear about it and what swami ji did he has identified it he worked against this great influx of material science with a great knowledge of spiritual science we all know that there are many people who have identified the greatness of swami vivekananda's entry to the western world there is one great uh, person a philosopher in england he has he has said that swami vivekananda's entry to the western world was what he said swami vivekananda has initiated a counter attack on western society from east see how they have looked at it swami vivekananda's entry to the western world was nothing but a kind of counter attack from east so counter attack from east on west was initiated by whom by swami vivekananda and the tool with swami vivekananda was great knowledge of spiritual science and uh, swami uh, this uh, ramkrishna paramahamsa ramkrishna mission has published one book uh, 
about uh, how different people from various countries have paid tribute to Swami Vivekananda at different point of time. And they have recorded Bal Gangadhar Tilak's tribute to him and where he has specifically mentioned all these things. So it was a counter attack through spiritual science against the influx of material science. And uh, everyone, all of us can identify this. Still, we are under influence of that material science. Though Britishers have left this country, our own people are ruling this country, but still, dominion of Western science is still existing in this country. We are, even at this point, means when we are completing 75 years of Swatantrata, we are in a not position to come out of that influence. So, we need to understand this fact. So, Lokmanya Tilak was a great visionary to understand this. And he was the one who could put forward through his own life the example to counter scientific challenge of British people through science. We know that what he did as a freedom fighter in many fields or many walks of life in this country. But we are not really aware about his scientific endeavors to challenge British intellectual hegemony. See, British people, what they wanted to claim, they wanted to claim their superiority and they were abusing Indians as most inferior people on this planet. They said Indian knowledge is most regressive in nature. All of us know that how Britishers used to look at India. They used to abuse or demean Indians as snake charmers and whatnot. And they said that Indians lived, though they have lived for long, for eons together, but Indians have lived or they are immersed in all kind of blind faiths. Indians and India has no connection with any kind of reason-based knowledge creation. So whatever you say as great treasure house of knowledge is most reg regressive because it is not at all based on any kind of rational thinking. That was their claim. And, but what kind of knowledge they had with them for claiming their superiority, they used to say that you are dwarf in front of us. Your knowledge is so little compared to European knowledge and especially British knowledge. And they wanted to prove that with great many examples. One particular thing that we should know about it is, they said that Aryans invaded this country and they pushed back original Indians and they became sole rulers of this country. So, we are also like them. As Aryans came from outside, we are also outsiders. But as Aryans invaded you, we are also going to invade you. But they wanted to legitimize their rule over here by saying that we are giving you great gifts. And those great gifts were of science and technology, a new knowledge, a most useful knowledge for people. And how they demeaned our own knowledge, Macaulay made a statement that Sanskrit is barren of useful knowledge. Useful knowledge is what? Science. Science is useful for our life. And that is totally absent in Indian knowledge system. So that kind of statements, arguments, they could make just to legitimize their rule in India, legitimizing their stay in India, legitimizing their rule in India, by saying that we are gifting you gems of the knowledge. So we are here to tell you, uh, to uplift you, to take you to new heights so that you can progress further. So that was their claim. And how they used to claim many things. See, uh, Western thought believes that this entire creation of universe took place 4,004 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. 
that has been clearly mentioned in all texts in Western theology. So that is their claim. All of you are aware about modern science claim that when Big Bang theory took or Big Bang took place 13.8 billion years ago. But what was their claim? And even today they claim this that creation of universe happened hardly 6,000 years ago. Lokmanya Tilak, who was a great mathematician, many of us uh, may not be having this information that uh, he was uh, such a great mathematician. He wrote a book on arithmetic and in Maharashtra, people used to use that book as a textbook of algebra and geometry and arithmetic. So he was so brilliant in that field of mathematics. He did many things. So he took up that challenge that prove that India is much, much older than that of Europeans' idea about creation. So he wanted to prove the superiority of Indians or India against the British claim. And for that, he made use of science. He was not just a kind of mathematician. He was a great astronomer too. And he could reform almanacs which were present in those days in Maharashtra. And he came out with a Tilak Panchang. Panchangam is almanac. And because of his great knowledge about astronomy as well as mathematics, he could come out with that reformed almanac. So that was a great contribution. In my home and my family, we used to use the same almanac because that was in a reformed form. So he was a great reformer in that sense. With the use of knowledge, he could reform the great scientific traditions of our country. But he never stopped over there. He was a great scholar of Sanskrit too. And while reading Vedas, his entire focus was on descriptions about positions of astral bodies in Vedas. And as he was a great scholar of astronomy and mathematics as well, based on those descriptions, he endeavored to calculate time at that particular time when such type of astral body positions were there and he could actually calculate and he could prove based on astronomy and mathematics that this particular part of Rugveda was written 4,500 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. So it was almost 500 years before the Jesus Christ, this was written in Rugveda. And he claimed that it was not sudden outbreak of knowledge. There has to be some tradition for that. And he went on and on and he kept on investigating with the tools of science, modern science and mathematics, that he could date the origin of our Vedas to 8,000 years. His first book came out or published in the year 1892. The book's name is, title is the Orion. Orion is a Muruga, Muruga Nakshatra. And based on, even in Bhagavad Gita, he was a great uh, proponent of Bhagavad Gita. He wrote Gita Rahasya while he was there in jail at Mandala in Myama. So see what kind of capacity they used to have in those days. He was there in jail, but he could write a great treatise about Gita. And that is famous. Almost in 70 languages across the world, people have translated that Gita Rahasya authored by Lokmanya Tilak. I will come to that next. But let us understand this fact. He came out with the book with the title The Orion, that is about Muruga Nakshatra, because he could relate that vernal equinox was there when this constellation was there in the sky. So he could relate many such things and he could prove literally that because of this description in Rugveda, I can, with the all kind of evidences of science, prove that this Rugveda or this particular verse of Rugveda was written in 4500 BC. 
and he went back again to prove many other things. So his first such book, scientific book, got published in 1892. Compare, he was born in 1856 and in 1892 he could write such a great book. Even today, people are learning or trying to know many things out of that book. The most famous article about this book is written by none other than one of the greatest living scientists of our country and his name is Dr. Jayanta Naralikar. That article of Jayan Naralikar about the Orion and the endeavor of Lokmanya Tilak in the domain of science is very much available on internet. All of us should go through it and one should understand that how with great respect Dr. Jayanta Naralikar has described the effort of Lokmanya Tilak and how utterly scientific it was. And another book with the same idea where he could prove that it is Aryan race has not come from western side. But he said at that point of time Aryans were staying or their home was in Arctic region. So the name of the book which appeared or got published in 1902 exactly 10 years after this first book the name of that title of that book was Arctic Home in Vedas. So he could prove with the evidences based on science that all these people at that point of time their homes were in Arctic region and he has specifically said those people, those people with, they are called with great name Aryans, Arya people, they travelled from that particular region to three parts of this world. One is India, another is Persia and third one is Greek, Greece. So he said the same people went in three different directions. So he has claimed it. So likewise, he wanted to claim, it has been specifically mentioned that he wanted to claim superiority of Indians over British superiority. They wanted to claim that we are superiors, you are all inferior people. You have no reason based knowledge system with you but it was Lokmanya Tilak who could prove with great details and this was for the first time in the history of modern era that any scientists have used astronomical methods to date many historical events. So it was for the first time in the history of modern science Lokmanya Tilak did this thing. He made use of science to date historical or prehistoric events in this world. So is it not a great contribution? And this great contribution was to prove the superiority of India over British, to challenge their hegemonic attitude. So how Lokmanya Tilak could make use of science to prove superiority of Indians? We need to understand this. And he was most versatile person, multifaceted genius. He was understanding the economic uh, level of our country. How British people have looted us. All of us know this fact that now it has been straightforwardly proved with all kind of scientific evidences that British while they were here, while they were ruling this country for 190 years, they have looted our country and the figure is 45 trillion dollars. Can you imagine this? Today, we are thinking that in next 10 years or at the end of this decade, by 2030, our size of economy should be 5 trillion dollars. See how little uh, our aspiration is. And what British have looted? 45 trillion dollars. Nine times what we are aspiring today to become at the end of this decade. They have looted us nine times more than that of our aspiration today. So let us see what kind of uh, adverse condition was created by British people over here in our country and how we were at that particular point of time. So Lokmanya Tilak could study all those aspects and he was of the opinion 
by making use of modern science we should industrialize our country and he promoted a swadeshi concept we all know that swadeshi concept was promoted by lal bal pal and he was one of the great proponents of swadeshi concept and he was of the opinion we should achieve self reliance in every walk of life and economic life or economic domain of our country should be strengthened with modern industries and what he did there is a great example glaring example is even today standing near pune at talegaon and that is known as today uh, coincidentally united nations has declared this year as international year of glass glass and ceramics united nations has declared it it was a lokmanya tilak who could envisage that how we should bring in this science and technology of making glass in our industries and there were people around him he encouraged them and he said that you must go to japan to learn how without taking any help from europeans Jap japanese people have established their own industries with the development of their own science and technology so people he was he was sending to japan to learn what kind of glass science and technology japanese have so some of the people were sent to japan uh, by the uh, encouragement and all kind of support through lokmanya tilak we all know that how he could send swatantra vir savarkar to london and there was a india house a similar house was built in japan also we are not aware about it but there was a india house in japan and one person from maharashtra govind the poddar he used to take care of that india house and he used to welcome indian youngsters over there and he used to connect indian young young minds to different industries in that country and all these people they used to get connected with mitsubishi mitsubishi is a famous name even today and uh, as that was there actually american attack was on mitsubishi because they were challenging american economic hegemony so it was an attack on mitsubishi particularly and several banks in japan but lokmanya tilak was having this kind of vision today we are talking about science diplomacy but our own people like lokmanya tilak they were so wise they were so clever that they were knowing that who were the enemies of british people and how we should seek help from enemies of british rule to save our country to make our country free from the clutches of british rule so all such youngsters were sent to japan to learn science and technology about glass and when they came back there was a fund created by all our people that fund itself got converted into national stock exchange which is there in mumbai bombay stock exchange so likewise he had that vision also and with that fund what was the idea it was a crowd sourcing kind of idea at that point of time today we talk about crowd sourcing many people will contribute so it was idea of that kind and what was the idea reason intention behind that everyone cannot go to jail and cannot sacrifice everything in his or her life so what people should do they should contribute to this paisa fund and that will be taken as their endeavor for making our country free from the clutches of british rule so paisa fund was a kind of weapon against british rule and that fund was utilized to establish industries so that we can stop import of many things from britain that was the idea and first such glass factory was established through this capital from paisa fund so that factory is even standing at talegaon even today and the name of that factory is paisa fund glass factory so lokmanya tilak initiated all these things so we can understand they were not only using astronomical science mathematics but they were having those ideas in their minds 
that to make our country self reliant in every aspect of life we should start industries in our country so it was lokmanya tilak who could understand this fact and he initiated many such things in maharashtra and this factory is today working even today paisa fund the glass factory you can visit uh, the page of that factory on google and you can understand that how such efforts were taken in those times to have great fight against british rule because we need to have links with enemies of british so germans japanese they were the enemies of british and indians our own people freedom fighters they were connecting great things with them so that there will be a link between and all all of us know that then subhash chandra bose first went to japan and germany then raj bihari bose went to japan and germany but all these things were previously done by lokmanya tilak to establish such international links to fight against british rule so they were having this kind of picture in their mind and with all these things they could do many things even he could understand that several reforms in our traditions are must and they should be based on modern science so i have already mentioned about the almanac there were almanacs even today in our country 60 almanacs are there people are using that but lokmanya tilak with a new knowledge about astronomy based on modern science he had an idea because he was a great mathematician too so he used modern science for the reformation of our own traditions so that they will have scientific basis so those ideas was also there in their minds so let us understand he came forward he had a great discussion with many of the counterparts in maharashtra who were engaged in uh, forming or designing or preparing almanacs and uh, by collecting them at one place he could have a parishad of jyotishi because all these are jyotishis astro astrologers he could bring them together he could form a small uh, forum for them and with a great effort he could reform all those almanacs so likewise he could take efforts in many aspects we need to understand what he has written in gita rahasya he was uh, of the opinion because of those times and setting that gita has given us a great message about karma so he insisted on the karma yoga that is the third adhyaya of gita and he has written great commentary on gita but his stress is on the karma yoga he he could focus on that particular karma yoga aspect of gita and he presented great many things but prelude to that as a foreword of this entire great commentary on gita he has written extensively in that book about indian system of science many of you might have come across uh, different adhyayas of gita one is kshetra kshetradnya yoga what is kshetra that is field and kshetradnya means knower of that of that field what is field today this is a very common word in the domain of science we talk about fields electric field magnetic field intersection of those fields and so many things what is field according to indian knowledge system and lokmanya tilak has extensively written about all those things how science evolved in india what are the basic principles of science what is sattva rajatam uh, you will be able to uh, uh, amaze to know that there is a very old treatise on the uh, ornithology a specific subject science of birds that is called as ornithology but uh, in 8th century uh, one great scholar has written a book with a title muruga pakshi shastra it is a basic uh, book on or a kind of textbook on ornithology so uh, there it has rightfully mentioned that we can classify birds on three basic divisions that is sattva rajatam so sattva rajatam is not just philosophical <coughs> ideas they are scientific ideas and based on those 
how we could classify many things. So likewise, Lokmanya Tilak has extensively written as a prelude to his commentary on Gita about all these things. What is Tanmatra? What is Pancha Mahabhuta? He has written extensively on that. And he says, this was the science of our country. He has uh, written extensively on Sankhya Darshana also, where we could find out uh, the theory of evolution, how these Panta, Pancha Mahabhutas have emerged from Akasha, Akasha to Prithvi, how these Pancha Mahabhutas have emerged. Lokmanya Tilak could study and write about those things while he was in the jail. He was given a six years jail by British people. Court has ruled that and he was there in Mandale, which is there in Myama, today's Brahmadesh. But while he was there in jail, he could utilize time with great purpose and he could write this commentary on Gita. Can we imagine this? Someone is in the jail and what kind of settings are there in the jail? And he was uh, under the great uh, attention of cruel eyes of British people. But even then, he could write this great intellectual commentary on Gita and he has explained what kind of science was existing in India and how we should understand Gita. Because unless we understand this, we won't be able to understand Gita. So that kind of vision all these people were having and they wanted to claim superiority of India based on its science. So let us take this message from their life. It was not just political freedom struggle. It was not politics they were involved in. They were using great scientific knowledge system of India to claim superiority of India against British intellectual hegemony. So let us understand this message from the great lives of people like Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Tilak. So Vidyan Bharati has come forward and Vidyan Bharati is trying to highlight or shed light on these aspects of these great people, these patriots who are visionary also. So Vidyan Bharati has taken up this kind of work or task or job in this uh, 75th year of independence while celebrating this as we are remembering our great freedom fighters, we are remembering their sacrifices we should not lose our attention on what kind of vision they had for Swatantra Bharat. It was not just uh, uh, we need to remember their sacrifice and great stories about their dedication. We need to understand what they were having in their minds, what kind of ideas they were having about Swatantra Bharat, how independent India should stand on the pillars of science, they had great vision about it. Let us try to understand those things because, as I have already mentioned, still we are under the influence of Western science. And unless we come out of it, we won't be able to progress in the right direction. Today our Prime Minister has given a clarion call by saying that after completing 75th year of independence, that we are going to complete on coming 15th August, hardly few days are there, we are going to enter the Amrut Kal and while we will be celebrating 100th year of independence, what we should do in this 25 years period, he said, our entire effort should be to regain the lost glory of our country and that lost glory is our science. We should regain that glory means we should take efforts, all kind of efforts to regain our own science. That is what is required. And if we regain that, we can progress like anything. Even great people like Abdul Kalam was also having similar dreams. And while presenting his idea about developed India, once he said in Pune, let us bring back the days of Nalanda. So that was the concept of regaining the lost glory. So let us understand this in this uh, year of 75th year of Swatantrata because this celebration has given us an opportunity to revisit our freedom struggle, revisit great lives of our patriots and 
great opportunity to understand their vision about independent India. So let us endeavor hard, let, let, us, let us take all kind of efforts to understand not only their sacrifice, but what kind of vision they had about Swatantra Bharat. That is what is to be done in this year. Uh, Vidyan Bharati has taken up this task to understand their vision and to move forward in that direction. Uh, we approached the Ministry of Culture and uh, we said, because all of us experience that if we travel through flight, aeroplane, if we go to railway stations, we understand that there are several announcements about that particular day and what happened on that particular day during freedom struggle. So there is an effort taken up by our central government to make people remember about all those great things. What has happened on this particular day? So such announcements are there in all public places. Displays are there depicting what has happened on this particular day during freedom struggle. So while discussing with Ministry of Culture, especially with the Secretary of Ministry of Culture, this idea emerged that all these scientists and all these people use science as a tool to challenge British hegemony. And that was, it was, or it is called as struggle for Swatantrata through science. So, idea emerged that we need to remember all such people who exercised or administered science to work against British hegemony and regain our freedom. So we thought of remembering many great scientists, but there are people like Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Normally, generally, people don't look at them as a scientist, but they were scientists. And as I have told you few examples, there are many more. So let us look at them with a different eye, with a different vision. Otherwise, he is already known to people because of his famous quote, Swarajya is my birthright and I shall take it. There are many other things also. But we need to understand this aspect of his life and his struggle that such feature was also there while he was struggling against British rule. So Vidyan Bharati has taken up such things. We have listed out almost 22 such people who took up science as a tool or weaponized science to attack British government or British rule. So such 22 names are there and we have given thought that on the birthdays of these people, we should celebrate this aspect of their life. So in next month, 2nd of August is a birthday of Acharya Prafulla Chandra Rai. As Vivekji was rightly mentioning about it, British police uh, have commented about him, Kolkata British police, that he was a revolutionary in the garb of a scientist. He wrote history of Hindu chemistry and what not he did in our country. So we are remembering him as a great patriot who used science against British rule to achieve Swatantrata. So first program will be on 2nd of August. That program Vidyan Bharati is doing with, in association with Delhi University. Because Delhi University is completing 100th year this time. And even the chemistry department is completing 100 years now. So we have come together to celebrate the life of Prafulla Chandra not only as a scientist, but a freedom fighter who used science for freedom. Next comes Vikram Sarabhai. His birthday is 12th of August. His birth year is 1919. So this is the second scientist. And we know that he is a father of space science in our country. And uh, one of the very prominent institute in this uh, domain of space science is located here in your Tiruvantapuram. So we are celebrating 12th of August at Tiruvantapuram and we are remembering Vikram Sarabhai over there. So likewise we are going to celebrate many others also. On 15th of September it is a birthday of Vishweshwarayaji. We always every year annually 
we celebrate that day as national engineers day but how vishweshwaraya did everything in his life to achieve swatantrata that will be highlighted over there so likewise we are taking up many such things throughout the year and uh, next program 12th of august will be in tiruvanthapuram uh, preparations are going on uh, if time permits uh, we can just have a small meeting after this also but uh, we are celebrating in association with ministry of culture all those scientists who were freedom fighters and they struggled hard through science to achieve swatantrata so let us join hands together to celebrate all these people and pay tributes to the, those all patriots namaste